the, the discussion is hacking the IT security gap. Tell me from your viewpoint, what you believe is that actual gap. You have a security organization that still believes they're the gatekeeper of everything, or you have an IT organization who is functioning in the same mentality of like, hey, we control all the assets. The two are battling out probably because they don't feel like they have a seat at the big kids table. They're the child that is acting up. And when that happens, you have this gap between the two organizations that starts being formed as they're trying to work through those processes that are trying to behave better. It's okay to say no every now and then, but the no has to come with a but. Both IT and security have to be enablers at the end of the day. After the temper tantrums are over, then you need to sit down and understand how to get the job done. From Craig Herter, he asks, how is the IT security gap impacted by organizations in which security reports up through the CIO as opposed to actually having a seat directly on the board? I often found that IT still had this a bit of a legacy mindset. To me, that's one of the big challenges in having that filtered message that they're still putting the IT lens on it. So having making sure that you understand what your boss's filter is because you are going to have times they're just like, no, we don't want to be able to enable this because we're losing our control. And security is like, but yeah, we're actually gaining security if we go down this path. The fact is that the CISO going back 10 or 15 years ago didn't have a seat at the table when the board of directors meeting came around. Everything would be funneled through the eyes and the ears and the perspective of the CIO. The good news is that not only do we have a seat at the big boys table, but that we're getting more and more time. We're getting more and more of an audience. The board of directors is very, very focused on security. Here's a good question that came in from Ian Pointer. If the CISO is reporting to the CIO, what strategies would you use to make sure the security voice is heard at the board level? If you don't know what your CIO is trying to accomplish and you're not aligned to his objectives, you're not going to get it pushed through. I don't think you need the CIO to push the objective anymore. It's the first two or three things on the board's mind, especially these days with the past attacks over the past couple of months. This is a common one. Anatoly C. asked this question. How do you address the gap between perception of how secure you are versus the actual reality? Referring back to risk register. Having that risk register where you can tie things back to and say, this is our risk posture. This is our risk tolerance. So here's here's our top risks. Here's what we're what mm -hmm. we're dealing with. And we've moved more to a quantitative risk and not just saying that's high, that's medium, that's low. Now I can put right. a dollar amount. So for every dollar I put in, I can actually start to measure where I'm lowering my risk and look at my ROI. What controls are you going to put around it to beat the bad idea? charge IT a fee for every time that they violate a security policy, use those funds to buy more SIM capability to keep the money rolling in. How are you gonna beat that bad idea? So I'm gonna expand the program to just beyond IT and charge everybody for their uh, either, either bad security ideas or misconfigurations. Make all remote workers sign a liability clause, passing all security requirements and diligence to them. This is where I would tie in going back to the insider threat conversation from last mm -hmm. week, add some of those tools to add that insider threat. Anytime they violate that, they're putting in the money that we're then using as part of our security square jar. I love it. And while we're at it, why don't we put a monitor on them so we can follow them around where they go, what they do. And if they go too far, then we can, you know, we can shock them. And then we can have the corporate police come and take them back to their house where we can we can monitor where their device is. Andrew Armstrong, who works with you, asked, would be curious if others have found ways to address uh, what I was asking earlier, vulnerability management, patching, and asset management as common core challenges between security and IT. This is one of those areas that security and IT can come in conflict. So it's that uptime conversation that IT is responsible for with infrastructure, Mm -hmm. And depending on how the infrastructure is built out, is there re enough redundancy in place? Do we have the right infrastructure there where we can patch on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. But often the patching is done not because they're trying to make the environment more secure. They're doing it because they have to report to somebody and they want it to look really good. I think that's where it breaks down is when you have these ideas that germinate in a meeting room or over a, over a collaboration call where only IT knows about it and you don't, the, the proper architects, the proper security people, the IT people, legal people, compliance people to really round out how you're going to go forward. I'm going to ask this question that came in from Phil Wolf, even though, which firms do you go to for your post-breach CISO grief counseling? 
I wish that something exists. If anybody on that's uh, this listening wants to get something in place, we could actually use that whole um, virtual hug counsel. process. It's always an unfortunate conversation to deal with customers after they've mm. been breached. They're not easy conversations because, no. you know, under the shared responsibility model, you don't want to tell a customer or somebody else that it was their fault. Our winner from last week is Kira Wojak. Which is worse between have all security concerns run through the help desk and their prioritization matrix, or have IT and InfoSec both report to sales and marketing. Whoever can advertise themselves better in every issue wins. I'd rather have a help desk dealing with which issue they thought was worse or how they would go about solving a problem than, than the marketing department. It's, it's just the thought process um, that differs greatly between those two. As the head of security of a SaaS company, I know that security is used as a market differentiation. And so I know that sales and marketing are picking me over our IT organization who's on the back end. So absolutely, if they want to run it and be in charge, I know I'm going to get my funding over the IT org. Security has to be seen as an enabler. It's okay to say no. Don't, And we shouldn't be afraid to say no. But hopefully the no comes with a comma and it's no because of this and here's the way to do it here's what the parameters are, here's how it's acceptable. When you're working on your goals and prioritization, make sure you have time scheduled with leadership in the IT organization or the security organization. Be deliberate, take the time to sit down and go through and discuss why you have these prioritizations. How does this impact what they have prioritized so you can have minimize the amount of times you guys are gonna butt heads against each other as you're trying to get work done.